Okay. So again, we've got the familiar situation, ball rolls down the ramp, falls to the floor. Some of you have seen that before. Okay. Assume 100 centimeter tape, one meter. Make some of the numbers easy. Okay. Now, please take assume. D degrees. And we assume this distance is G centimeters. I don't want you to solve the problem. I want you to set it up. Tell me what the velocity of the ball is after it comes off the ramp. So you could do this with symbols, which I would kind of recommend, and then plug the numbers in. Okay, goes along with the problem on the incline that you have for homework. Hey, if you want to do with the numbers, okay, comes out the same. But I'm going to end up doing it with the symbols. So in symbols, I would just use draw the picture. Angle alpha. Okay. Distance. I don't want to use X because X is going to be one of your variables. What am I going to use for the distance? I don't like to use D for distance because you use D's in for derivatives. But we're not doing derivatives right now. So I'm going to bite the bullet and use D here. And what if we had to take the derivative of this? Would it be DD, DX? Sound like you're stuttering. Okay. So H here. Find V naught. So at this point, here's your vector V naught. I just asked you to find V naught, which is a magnitude of the vector V naught. But you might end up finding the X and Y components of the V naught using the Pythagorean theorem, depending on how you decide to set it up as a possibility. So if you work it out in symbols, it's going to be a little simpler than carrying all the numbers around. Would you like to look at the numbers? Okay. Okay, so ask you to write out equations for x of t and y of t, right? Well, you can immediately write the equation for x of t because acceleration is uniform. If it's uniform, it's uniform in both directions. So you could write I'd write this just automatically. It's your equation for uniformly for the Position is a function of time. And I'd write y of t minus y naught equals v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. Now, in some cases, you need to grab one equation or another and start solving for t. For example, it's not a bad thing to do. But your overview here, you know, you're, you're focusing on a detail rather than a big picture. And sometimes you can work from detail to big picture, but it's hard to keep the big picture on this problem. This is a fairly challenging problem in projectile motion. Okay. So 
a recommendation is you just start with two places. Then you figure out things about the various parameters in the equations. Okay, so for X, what do you know? AX is zero. Talk about that last time, which we're ignoring our resistance. And then my lab assignment, I think pretty nicely reinforced that. Okay. And then the V naught X. Is V not cosine alpha. Now, a picture helps, especially like for V not. So, in our picture, just to explain why V not is what it is, here's your ram. Here's angle alpha. Here's the ball going off the ram. And here's V not. We can Put this on a coordinate system. We orient the coordinate system with the y axis vertical because we know that all the acceleration is in the vertical direction, which makes it very convenient to analyze the x direction because there won't be any acceleration. Well, we've already noted that, but that's why when we look at the vector v naught and resolve it into components, we want this orientation. For the axis. Okay, so now we've got V naught here, angle alpha here. I draw the whole thing. Here's V naught X. This is a picture that I've always drawn. And we'll look at these components of the vector. We know it's angle. Okay. We still know what the magnitude of V naught is, but we do then know how its how its components are related to the magnitude of V naught. Just leave myself room to write it all. I went ahead and wrote out the whole thing because at times you're really going to need to remember that that's a vector, V naught cosine theta times your I vector. And this V naught Y is your V naught. And it's not theta, it's alpha. This chalk is thick and making it hard to write some of these symbols. So one symbol. Okay, V naught cosine alpha. V naught sine alpha, but it's negative. Give myself a little negative sign. Give myself room. But there it is. Okay. So you have this picture, and that picture should be automatic. Write down these equations, that should be automatic. Write down this picture, that should be automatic. Now you know you've got other equations and you can pull them in if you need them. But um, in this case, uh, technically you don't really need them. Sometimes they're convenient, you might be in this case. Okay, anyhow, V naught X then is V naught cosine alpha because of this picture. And again, that picture should just be automatic. As soon as you draw a vector with an angle, and its components. So as you draw a vector, draw in its components, even if you don't know the angle, remind yourself that it has components and those components are central. You're going to analyze everything in terms of components. Okay, well, AX is zero, V naught X is zero, V zero cosine theta. And this is that so we should have there. So,
x of t minus x naught is just d zero x t is d zero cosine alpha times t a x is zero, so it doesn't have to appear, right? And then they will circle around that. So. And you're also going to have y of t minus y naught equals d zero y t. Well, we know that's negative d zero sine alpha times t. It's going to be that plus one half the acceleration. Now, what's the acceleration in the y direction? It's negative t. If you don't have a negative in there, you have to follow the coordinate system that we pretty much always follow with projectiles. And we follow it because it's a vertical horizontal because the x acceleration is zero, all the accelerations in the y direction. And we put it in standard orientation. We could rotate it where the y axis is down and the x axis to the left. Still a right handed coordinate system. If we do that, and all your relationships, the cosines and angles of sines still apply, but it's confusing to look at it. It's not as simple as thinking up is positive and positive x directions to the right. Okay. So now we have two equations and the other thing is what's x naught and what's y naught? Well, you can choose. Uh, you can choose to let x naught and y naught be zero at this point, okay? Or you could choose have it at the floor directly below this point. You could even put it out here at the point where the thing lands. The simplest is going to be x naught y naught equals zero, which means that your initial point is here. So x naught and y naught are both zero, then we have the equations. X of t equals d naught cosine alpha times z, and y of t equals d naught negative d naught sine alpha times t minus one half d squared. And notice. Another advantage to working in symbols is I never have to write down the units until the end. So here we have it. Generally, then what we would do is what do we know? Okay. We want to find the time when the ball lands. Okay, that's one thing we can certainly do with this. We know the time here, that's implicitly t equals zero. Um, And we want to 
maybe be explicit about that. Usually, it's going to be obvious where we want t to equal zero. But we could let t equal zero landing and get a negative time when the ball leaves the ramp. We could solve it that way. We could get to it. Okay. Now, we want to find t when the ball lands. Why is that? Because that's when we know both x and y. Now, we know both x and y here, but it, they're both zero. That doesn't help a lot. So, because That's just one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is the only point other than the origin that we know the coordinates of is the landing point. Okay. So I could have said the same thing. Uh, we, not necessarily we want to find T when the ball lands, uh, but we know the positions when the ball lands. So we could write out the equations and then we would see that we can solve those equations for T. Sorry. Okay, so at landing, x equals d and y equals negative h. So D equals B naught cosine alpha times T and negative H equals negative B naught sine alpha times T minus one half G T squared. T here is the same as the T here. And we eliminate T. First equation tells us that t equals d over v naught cosine alpha. And the second equation tells us that negative h equals negative v naught times. So I wrote it all out. Sine alpha times z over v naught cosine alpha. And of course, that's going to give you a tangent of alpha there. And then it's going to be minus one half g times. square of that time. Now, how many unknowns do we have in this equation? Let's talk about that. Okay, so again, my question was, what in this equation don't we know? Okay, and I'd ask you to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down whether we know it. And point it out again over here. That I gave you H, it was 100 centimeters. I gave you alpha, it's your D number in degrees. 
and I gave you D with your G number in centimeters. So we know H gave you that. We know V naught. No, that's what we're after. So we know sine alpha. Well, we know alpha, so yeah, we find the sine. So we know D. Yeah, we gave you that. Again, we gave you alpha. We don't know V naught. We know G. Yeah, that's acceleration of gravity. And, do, and then we know everything else here because we do it here. So the only unknown is V naught. So now we just solve this equation for B naught. Now, a hint in solving this equation after you square this quantity, then you have a common denominator. The common denominator is going to be 2 B naught squared cosine squared of alpha, right? And when you square this, you're going to get B naught squared times the cosine squared of alpha, okay? And you got a 2 here. When you have an equation with denominators, you multiply both sides by the denominator so you don't have to worry about denominators. And then V naught is going to come out in a form where you can easily find it. So go ahead and do that. And I'll, I'll help out a little bit if your algebra is rusty, but it's fairly straightforward. Okay, well, here's the equation. And this says that negative H equals negative B naught times sine alpha times D over B naught cosine alpha minus one half G. All I'm going to do in this step is I'm going to square this. And that's clearly the square. It's basic algebra of x problems. Okay. Now, common denominator is two. B naught squared cosine squared alpha. So we multiply both sides by two B naught squared cosine squared alpha. So write down what you get. When you multiply both sides of this equation by two v naught squared cosine squared alpha, okay. Now there's good news and bad news about the algebra here. Good news is you can do it, but most of you are making some mistakes. Okay, ah, uh, uh, and the other good news is and so the bad news is that most of you are making some mistakes. Okay. Not everybody, you might have looked at some of them wrong, so I don't know really who's doing it right, who's doing it wrong, unless you just didn't multiply by the denominator. I, got, I need to see that step. Um, another bit of good news is the algebra in this course doesn't get much trickier than this. If you do this, your algebra is pretty much up to everything. Okay. So uh, you got to make sure you can. Then. Okay. So we have the equation. Well, here's the equation. If I multiply both sides by this, I'm going to literally multiply both sides by this. I'm going to write down negative h times two v naught squared cosine squared alpha. And I multiply the left side by this quantity. I'm going to write out the right side, and then I'm going to multiply it by that quantity.
you know I'm not going to have food. Should be the water board. But a man in that is counting this. He's going to write it down. I usually figure out the other side. I give myself room to put people signed here, so I've got room to write the whole mess out. Um, now you're a Z naught. Times sine of alpha. Times. I'm copying down very carefully because I'm prone to write what's coming next before I write what's there. Okay. And that is. Save myself room, I'm going to write g over two instead of one half g. And I'm still going to have a space problem here. So it's d squared over d naught squared plus r squared alpha. And I put all this two parentheses and multiply it by two. D naught squared one squared alpha. So I've multiplied this side by this, and I've multiplied this side, all this side by this. Now I apply the distributive law. I'm not, I'm not doing algebra by what it looks like, I'm doing algebra by the rules. And if you do algebra by what it looks like and what you think ought to happen, you're going to be prone to screwing up unless you know what rule you're applying, and I'm sure that it applies, okay? When the algebra gets tough, be really careful and use the rules rather than, I mean, the actual rules. Distributive law had to set both sides, track both sides, etc. okay? Not cross this out and cross that out. It's not a rule. Unless you know you're crossing out factors, and that's a rule that comes from the real rules. Real rules are pretty much what I just said. Okay, so what we have here then is, of course, negative two d naught squared cos x squared alpha times h. Okay. And we keep in mind that we know everything here except better put a parenthesis there so you don't have to multiply alpha by h, right? But again, we know everything here except v naught. We know alpha, so we can calculate that. That's just a number you can plug into your calculator when you need it. And we know h. So just multiple v naught squared. Okay, over here, I'm going to write it out in all its detail. I'm going to write 2 v naught squared cosine squared alpha times. Negative V naught, find alpha, times G over V naught, cosine alpha. Minus, You see, I've got a 2 V naught squared cosine squared alpha here, which means I've got a V naught squared cosine squared alpha in the numerator and a V naught squared cosine squared alpha in the denominator. V naught squared cosine squared alpha divided by V naught squared cosine alpha is one. I'm not going to cross it out. I'm just going to let it go away. I'm going to kind of do this. I'm going to say, okay, now I'm not going to do this. Okay. You probably want to cross it out and cross it out. Well, those are factors of the ultimate numerator and denominator. You can do that. You can also rearrange this. You can write that as 2 V naught squared cosine squared alpha over 1. Okay. And then the product of the numerators and the product of the denominators will be such that you can rearrange that with a V naught squared cosine squared alpha over V naught squared cosine squared alpha. That's following the rules. You're shortcutting the rules to cancel factors, but if you're careful, to cancel factors. That's why it works. Just don't be canceling 
this alpha with this alpha. Or canceling this two with this two over here. Okay? Those aren't factors. It doesn't work. It can't be made to work. And I actually see that from people, even at this level sometimes. Usually not. It happens. Okay. So being very careful to be sure I really do it. Those go away. And the two divided is divided by the two, just gives you one, it goes away. And everything's multiplied and divided, so that all works. So we're just left with negative g d squared. Now what happens over here? Well, at this stage, this V naught cosine alpha will divide one of these V naught cosine alphas. There's a V naught squared cosine squared alpha, okay? Which could be written as V naught cosine, cosine alpha times V naught cosine alpha. And one of those would match up with this. So now we can say we have minus two V naught squared cosine squared alpha plus negative two equals one. I'm just going to write this thing as two v naught cosine alpha times negative v naught sine alpha times d. This is divided one of these, leaving one of these, and this is what I have. And this is minus g d squared. Then I reckon, well, I'm going to write out one more step minus two v naught squared cosine squared alpha times h equals negative two v naught squared cosine alpha sine alpha times z minus g z squared. I'm missing something. Maybe I'm not missing anything. I should have a term here with a V naught in. Let's pause for a second and check my own algebra. Okay, uh, what I'm doing here, this is pretty simple if you're careful about it. Uh, one thing I didn't see was GD squared is not units of meters squared per second squared. It's meters per second times meters squared, which is meters cubed per second squared, which is what I get here and here. Okay, units of V naught squared times H meters cubed per second squared. If I'm in SI units or uh, length cubed per time squared, however you want to think about it. Uh, so I've checked to make sure this is all dimensionally consistent. I pretended to be confused so I could do that and illustrate the process. And uh, I appreciate y'all uh, appreciating that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I still think that needs to be a V naught in there. We'll see. If there isn't just a plain V naught term in here, then I can bring all my V naught squares over here on the left by adding this term to both sides. And I get. I'm doing way more algebra steps than I would normally do. I think you need to see them. So I add this to both sides. I'm not going to do that in two steps. And I've got this. Okay. Then I've got factor out the V naught square, and I have
this. So it would be no square. I'm going to do something here. I don't want to have a negative on that. I'm going to just change the sign of the denominator. And it's now cosine squared to alpha times h. I did something careless there. I factor out two v naught squared and I'm left with this, right? Because I have the two here, but I got rid of it there because I thought I factored it out. Anyhow, that's, this is correct. And there I have equation for v naught squared. So V naught is plus or minus the square root of this. I don't think that's right. Something, some term in here should have a V naught on it. But since this term simply doesn't have a V naught, when I multiply by V naught squared, well, they're going to get v naught squares. This works. That's your horizontal displacement divided by your horizontal velocity. That's going to give you your time, and you multiply that by v naught sine negative v naught sine alpha, and that gives you your vertical displacement, which is negative h. Okay. Uh, and uh, it's not negative H, but it's negative H. Then you have this. Somebody might be seeing this, so tell me. Okay, we've discussed this. I'm still uncomfortable with the solution. Okay. Uh, but unit wise, it works out. We have units of distance in the denominator, right? We have units of distance cubed over time squared. Here. So the unit of distance here cancels one of the cube distances. Here we have then distance squared over time squared. And that's the unit of V naught squared. Distance squared over time squared. So units, unit wise, it's fine. So the error isn't in isn't something we can trace as in, in terms of the units. Now uh, one person uh, you know, divided out the uh, v naught here and made that into a tangent alpha. Okay, so you have negative d tangent alpha, section. Okay, well, that's exactly what you have here. You can divide the v naught into the v naught and sine alpha by cosine alpha. You still get d tangent alpha. Uh, when you multiply by this, it would give you. 2 v naught squared cosine squared tangent alpha times d, which would be this. Okay, this is totally equivalent to this because when I multiply numerator and numerator, denominator of this by the cosine of alpha, I get a cosine squared of alpha in the numerator, a cosine of alpha in the denominator. If the cosine alpha goes under the sine alpha, I've got cosine squared alpha tangent alpha, which is what you get if you did that up here. Now, I didn't do that up here because this denominator matches this. It's going to be squared. So when I multiply it out, we're going to have a, a, a division of uh, the v naught cosine alpha into one of the v naught cosine alpha here. Okay. And it's a matter of taste which way you do it. It works out the same either way. Down here, you would have cosine squared alpha tangent alpha, or you could have cosine alpha sine alpha. Uh, since a tangent of alpha divides, di yeah. uh, um, involves a sine over a cosine, my personal taste is to keep us away from denominators as much as possible. But if you're just going to punch numbers in, which ultimately you're going to do when you get down here. That works. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is I still can't find 
for the error. We don't really have to go to the quadratic formula to do this, but I think we should. Okay. But yeah, I'm looking at other things too, uh, but they're all uh, easy to reconcile, except my intuition, <laughs> which doesn't really have to be reconciled if it works. Okay. I don't see anything here. I think the algebra looks tight to me, but I'm going to ask you to go back to this and work it out without looking at anything and see what you get. Then plug your numbers in. Okay. Plug your numbers in and then solve the projectile problem with those numbers. In other words, now that you know everything, you can say, okay, if my angle is alpha and my V naught is what I think it is, when I do the solution, then do I get this distance D when I fall distance H? Just pretend you don't know the D now, since you know everything else, and calculate and see if it comes out the same. That's how you check it. I've checked everything else. Something screwed up. Now your final solution is V naught is going to be plus or minus the square root of this. Okay. Now, another thing is this denominator could be positive or negative. It's possible that I might have given you an impossible situation. Okay. I didn't, but it's possible that I could have. If D is so big, then it exceeds what you would get if you stayed on a straight line, then it ain't going to happen because gravity is going to be pulling this down no matter how fast this is going. In other words, as V naught approaches infinity, your distance approaches H cosine of alpha. And if you could continue this uh, line along here, you get a triangle with alpha over here, H to your opposite side. Okay. And this side being, um, it's actually, I said H cosine alpha, V H tangent alpha. Okay. No, V H cotangent alpha. You figure out what it would be. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind, but we're going to do the shorter side. Uh, so I'm going to write that on the board. I'll also try to email it to you. So the two factor authentication and everything else works. Um, I'll write the final, the, the final expression here. Okay. It made it really little hard to read, but it's just plug the minus the square root of this math. So plug the numbers in, get a result for V naught. Assume that V naught and find what D should be. Others assume everything else I gave you except D, and you should get the D you started with. If my algebra was correct and I'm suspicious. I'm not seeing what I expect to see. There we have it. Okay. And also, I mean, redo the algebra. See if you can confirm what I do. If you find out what I did wrong, write it out, take a picture of it, and send me a copy so I can go, oh, that's what it was. <laughs> okay. And it's it's hard to slap your head when you got this. <laughs> And I, I just found out that hurts. Uh, not much because I didn't slap my head very hard because, you know, I can't well, anyhow. Uh, <laughs>